Hi, everyone. I'm Murphy New, an assistant professor uh, in the computer science department at UC Santa Barbara, and also a research scientist at Google Quantum AI team. And I'm grateful for the organizers for me to be able to give a virtual talk today about a work with my amazing students and collaborators, Yu Long Dong, Honor Bennett, and Shi Jie Samuel Tan. We proposed a new quantum metrology algorithm that uses extremely low depth circuit to learn quantum gate parameters to the highest accuracy today. And we achieve that not with the conventional linear coherent applications, but with nonlinear transformation induced by the universal framework of quantum signal processing. And before I delve into the detailed uh, structure of our algorithm, let me first define what do I mean uh, by quantum metrology. Um, the metrology has two parts. So the metron uh, come from the Latin word uh, that means measurements. And logic from logo means learning. For quantum metrology, we perform projective or weak measurements and use the measurement results to learn about system parameters, such as environmental uh, defects or quantum state or gate values. And there are two very critical goals for quantum metrology. Uh, one is we want to be extremely accurate and extremely efficient with regard to the number of measurements, computing resources and time. And the accuracy is crucial since we are at the pivotal moment of crossing the fault tolerance threshold. To validate that we cross the very low fault tolerance error threshold, the 10 to minus three error probability, our algorithm has to function at even lower error rate, for example, 10 to the minus four in error. Um, this, to our knowledge, has not been achieved before, before our work for, the two, uh, for arbitrary two-level systems. And efficiency is also crucial since maintaining quantum computer require us to routinely recalibrate the whole device where quantum metrology is a, a basic subroutine. So more efficient quantum metrology literally means more time to use the quantum computers uh, for uh, useful uh, computation. So accuracy and efficiency are the main goals for uh, extremely uh, useful quantum metrology algorithms. And we can also characterize or categorize the, the existing methods according to the efficiency, uh, which is the runtime and the accuracy, which is the scaling of the accuracy versus depths, as well as the uh, applicability, for example, whether we can learn open system dynamics or not, and whether we are robust against state preparation and measurement error or not. Uh, I won't go uh, over every detail in this table, and it's not a complete table, of course. Um, uh, but today, uh, we will focus on the lower right corner uh, because as we increase our knowledge and control of the system, we're moving essentially from the upper left corner where we have the minimal amount of knowledge of the system model, but we require a lot of resource overhead to learn about the system parameter to the lower right where we have a sufficiently amount of uh, parameters and modeling of our device such that we can achieve the highest uh, accuracy and efficiency. And in fact, Google, uh, our team at Google pioneered the method called periodic calibration. It is a multi -parameter, multiple parameter generalization of robust face estimation. And you know, it's the only algorithm to our knowledge that achieve Heisenberg limit, a, a polynomial runtime, and can and be uh, adapted to learn open system and closed system dynamics uh, and is spam resilient. Uh, however, this method is not good enough uh, yet to achieve the, this 10 to minus four accuracy. Um, and I'll try to uh, explain to you why. And before that, I have to first uh, go over how high level how this algorithm work. Uh, so similar to the original robust space estimation, uh, uh, our multi-parameter periodic calibration also have this type of periodic circuit uh, where if I want to learn this target unitary gate parameter for the both zeta uh, and phi, I will repeat this gate multiple times, um, maybe followed by some single qubit operation and then measure the probability at the end. 
Um, so this gave me a transition probability from the initial state to the measured base stream. And by repeating k time, uh, the coherent parameter we want to learn, uh, which wrap around inside this omega parameter, will be amplified as a factor of k. And inverting this expression allow us to achieve the Heisenberg limit where the variance of our um, learning algorithm scale inversely quadratically as a function of k. Um, and this seems fine, but the most of the prior arts do not really care about the optimality of the scaling, which is a coefficient multiplicative factor in front of the scaling. Um, and in fact, uh, robust phase estimation and periodic calibration, they all have um, of order magnitude one in this coefficient. That means if we do want to achieve, say, 10 to minus 4 in standard deviation of our metrology tool, we will need around 10,000 uh, repetitions. This is beyond any existing quantum computer's capability. Um, so another really uh, uh, hard um, difficulty is that in a lot of devices, including the ones in semiconducting qubits, uh, the gate parameters, such as uh, this phi in this swap uh, fsim gate, can drift over the course of the repetition inside the same circuit. And because the way we inferred our parameter theta and phi, we required to invert the overall probability uh, at the end of the circuit, which is a function of theta and phi, any error in phi will trickle down to errors in all the other parameters. Uh, as evidenced by our experimental result here, uh, where we, me we measure the swap angle theta uh, uh, as a function of different reputations and we look at its standard deviation, uh, we notice there's a huge spread in its uh, performance accuracy due to the drift in fact in this prior art method. Um, so to address this main issue and to really achieve the, another level of accuracy not ever achieved before, we propose a new way to learn these gate parameters. Um, and instead of linear amplification, we use nonlinear uh, transformation to separate the time dependent term from the time constant term, uh, uh, while at the same time to uh, really achieve the optimal inference by having this optimal coefficient in front of the Heisenberg limit that's permitted by the Carmel bound. And we show that our algorithm in turn out to be near optimal even respect to the quantum circuit measurement uh, optimization uh, that is given by the quantum Cromerall bound. So now uh, in order to really understand our method, I'll give you a high level introduction of quantum signal processing. Um, the classical traditional signal processing really bear the same exact same flavor, which is if you, I give you a signal, and you want to transform to other type of signal from audio signal to electromagnetic wave, and then back to audio signal. Or we can transform a noisy looking signal through Fourier transform to extremely structured signal. And quantum uh, signal processing, the only difference really is the input signal that it's generated by a quantum dynamics. For example, in the simple case, correspond to a single qubit rotation. And the signal uh, is defined by the probability uh, of the transition from zero to one after I apply this quantum, uh, this single qubit rotation as a function of the rotation angle. And so if you only have one rotation, this type of signal is very simple. It's just a cosine or sine function. However, if I have multiple rotations and if I can choose the rotation axis, um, I can engineer a very sophisticated shape. For example, this one looks like a flat top type of shape. And uh, this groundbreaking work by Guan Hao, Ted, and I actually show that, in fact, it is universal for us to realize any degree in trigonometric polynomial functions with uh, n rotations. So for example, we can approximate a neural network activation function. And uh, this, the, the reason it, how it works, we can visualize uh, the underlying dynamics by, for example, rewriting this single qubit rotation into purely Z rotation and purely X rotation, then the only uh, parameter that we're changing to program the transformation are the Z rotations. Um, so in that sense, it's uh, almost like a, a electromagnetic field where we're programming the electric field with a fixed magnetic field to, to, to transform quantum information. And of course, this analogy 
uh, is only on the intuitive level, not on a, a very rigorous level. Uh, rigorously, we can uh, systematically generalize a single qubit transformation where we're performing a polynomial function uh, onto the original uh, scalar element of a two by two uh, matrix into a polynomial transform on the matrix block diagonal, uh, the upper left block of the block encoded matrix. Um, so what I, we can do with this uh, capability is essentially every single quantum algorithm then can be realized. For example, quantum simulation algorithm uh, require us to implement exponentiation of a, a target Hamiltonian function. And we can uh, realize the same task by polynomial approximation of this exponentiation function. In fact, uh, quantum signal processing and qubitization based simulation uh, is uh, one of the uh, most optimal uh, in regard to query complexity for uh, among all the existing quantum simulation algorithms. But it is not yet really optimal or efficient enough for deployment in real system because the error rate uh, for simulation uh, needs to be around chemistry accuracy 10 to minus 10, which is um, definitely require fault tolerance. So we're asking the question whether we can harness this universal transformation power to design new type of quantum neutrality algorithm. And so that lead me to our uh, quantum metrology um, algorithm based on QSP. And uh, we start by defining the problem uh, where we want to learn an arbitrary two by two uh, unitary. And this unitary, uh, well, you know, learning this unitary allow us to learn most of the two qubits uh, uh, available, for example, in super conducting system, the two qubit gate have this type of particle conserving a structure that is a block diagonal to a, into a two by two matrix. So we can we only need to learn two level unitary at a time. And similar for ion traps, Morrison's more Sorensen gate. So the problem is if you give me this type of U gate or two level gate, an arbitrary single qubit gate and projected measurement, our task is to infer uh, all the parameters in this gate. And to use QSP, we can look a little bit harder on the type of U-gate parameterization. It looks uh, very similar to the qubitization we discussed earlier in QSP. And so to leverage this structure, uh, we have uh, additional uh, design our circuit, which look very similar to the original periodic calibration circuit, where we have reputation of the target gate followed by Z rotation. Uh, but the difference uh, are in the, in the initial state and post-processing. So the initial state, we use a bell state defined by uh, uh, support with a different phase onto the one zero and zero one state, such that everything we're looking at is inside uh, in this two by two unitary. And based on different bases, we get two different measurement probability of measuring one zero at the very end. And after the, uh, using the same analytic analysis of QSP, we can analyze what's the outcome if I combine this uh, two uh, probability measurement. Uh, we can have this really neat expression where the Fourier transform of this um, uh, probability will give me a, a, a very simple uh, function of the parameter I like to learn, where the amplitude of this uh, Fourier transform give me the theta angle and the phase give me the phi angle. Uh, in this way, we completely diagonalize the two interdependent parameters theta uh, from phi. So that drift in one for the more phi does not really affect theta that much. Um, and, but because of the, the requirement of this Fourier transform, that means I need to apply this quantum circuit uh, at different omega, where omega is the corresponding frequency of the Fourier transform. So now our experiment take D different circuit and the depth of the circuit is also depth D. Um, and then we can perform uh, measurement and deterministic post-processing. Um, in this way, we can replace uh, the requirement of a black box optimization that is needed in the prior art. Moreover, we show that we have a very simple uh, uh, estimator for the parameter we would like to learn the theta and the phi, and our estimator is in fact 
maximum likelihood estimator and it's optimal uh, in, in regard to its variance uh, compared to um, classical crime morale bound. So this means our estimator is optimal in regard to the post-processing uh, for the given measurement circuit. And here we show the comparison between the crime morale bound, which is a solid line, um, and our performance, which is on top of the dashed colored line. Uh, and the dashed uh, black uh, line is uh, uh, fitting to the scaling uh, to, to show you what how does it scale. And you can notice that the parameter phi scale a one over d to the power four at the short depth depths. This on the surface look like as if it's faster than Heisenberg limit because we only have a depth d circuit. Um, but if you read our paper, you'll notice this does not uh, violate the asymptotic Heisenberg limit as you increase the D sufficiently long, you can, you know, the, the scaling of, of phi will converge to the normal Heisenberg limit. Um, but uh, another important thing is we, we are not only optimal with respect to crime morale bound, we are also only a factor within a factor away from the optimal circuit design for the quantum crime morale bound. And this factor too is kind of unavoidable if we want to achieve a deterministic estimator. And compared to the prior art of the periodic calibration, which is represented by the dotted uh, line, uh, which is the, its own performance compared to its own chromorale bound, uh, there are several magnitudes off from their own chromorale bound. And their chromorale bound is also uh, a couple magnitudes worse than our uh, QSP estimation and performance. And lastly, our method is also robust against open system dynamics uh, that is uh, describable by a depolarizing error. Uh, we showed that uh, the overall effect of a depolarizing error uh, of the strings alpha only rescale our uh, estimation of theta. Uh, so we provide a way to uh, estimate, directly estimate the depolarizing strains um, and to use that estimation to compensate its effect in our inference for theta. So on the right-hand side, we show you uh, its performance in simulation under the depolarizing uh, noise where it converged pretty fast under both depolarizing noise and time-dependent drift in fact, as we expect such decomposition should offer. And lastly, we have tested it on a real device uh, with uh, 17 pairs of superconducting qubits where we are learning the two qubit FSIM swap angles using the quantum signal processing estimation. And uh, we plot the result here uh, where the X axis are the, the result for our method and each dot is a different pairs of qubits. And the Y axis is the result from the prior art. And as you can see in the prior art, the variance of the estimation on theta is uh, uh, spread all over the place, um, maybe largely due to the different drift of phi qubit to qubit. Uh, but our method is concentrated around 10 to the minus three to 10 to the minus four in the standard deviation of theta. Moreover, the circuit depth that we, we need for our method is reduced from uh, around 100 to uh, 5 to 10 depth circuit. Um, so in this way, we are uh, achieving both a magnitude of improvement in accuracy and in efficiency. So to summarize, we can go beyond the traditional way of linear amplification uh, for learning quantum gate parameters if we leverage the universality of quantum signal processing transformation. Um, and we have built indeed a quantum signal processing estimation to learn quantum gate uh, parameters. And it's a, to our knowledge, the first time to be achieving this optimal efficiency in real experiment um, and very near optimal in regard to our measurement circuit design. And we overall offer around two magnitudes improvement over the prior art in regard to the Heisenberg scaling efficiency uh, that uh, allow us to reduce 
the required circuit depth to a hundred uh, or to a thousand down to less than depth 10 circuit. And um, given that uh, quantum signal processing can be used to realize any uh, universal quantum computing task. Um, so instead of waiting for a fault tolerant uh, quantum computer to arrive, which is already have close to zero errors, can we design error correction with real-time feedback using quantum signal processing uh, that integrate with, with our quantum metrology algorithm? Indeed, in a recent work of ours, uh, we show that uh, we, quantum signal processing have a, already a very nice structure that we can use for, for feedback or feed forward. Um, in this way, we can try to avoid uh, this type of millions of qubit requirement uh, in regard to uh, the resource that's needed for real world impact. Uh, lastly, well, I'd like to thank you and thank our, my collaborators. Yulong Dong, who is previously in UC Berkeley, is currently looking for quantum jobs. Uh, feel free to check out his homepage and all the students involved here. Um, and uh, I, my group at UCSB have also positions open for postdoc graduate researchers. So, and so feel free to email me if you're interested to join us to quantum research and uh, to do surfing. Thank you.